it's really nice to uh, be here and thank you for inviting me. Um, you know, it's always uh, really interesting for me to see the sort of new ways in which schools are emerging and uh, evolving. So I teach myself as well. Um, I've, I mean, I've taught at uh, university, but I've been in the last six years, I teach the film program at the IB uh, DP level. So I'm kind of going into a school regularly for half my week, my working week. So I kind of, um, yeah, I'm a little bit invested in this whole space of how we, what we open up for our, how we open up the world for our children. Um, yeah. So would you, you like me to talk about the film a little bit and sort of... Okay, okay. So, you know, as you know, the, you, you may know that um, the Delhi government, so there's this whole thing called the social, social and emotional learning, which is a, a big part of education now. And um, in 2018, the Delhi government and the Delhi government schools had introduced something called the happiness curriculum. And it sort of looks at, you know, these ideas, how to build inner resources in children to be able to cope with stress. Um, so there are sort of, there's a component of mindfulness in it. Uh, there is, um, uh, you know, uh, activities that um, allow the teacher to engage with children in a more playful um, kind of way. And there's a kind, uh, the use of stories is encouraged and um, there's a sort of um, space created for reflection. Now, to IB educators, much of this is not new because that's really what uh, education is conceived of in the IB, you know, the whole business of looking at the world and looking at yourself and the place that you want to inhabit in the world and how do you build your inner resources, all of that is really what um, the IB curriculum is about. But as you know that in India, with the kind of system that we have and the structure of education, there has not been that much space for that. So it was kind of considered a very big step. So I went in to um, do the film after a year of the curriculum being uh, in practice. And it was to be able to kind of gauge, to just look at how it's working, you know, what are, are there challenges and are there, you know, some benefits. And I think, like for me, it, the film is not about the curriculum so much as about this idea of happiness and how we are kind of, um, like what is it that we are communicating to children also, you know? And so uh, I feel, I mean, I, I hope that many of you will get a chance to see the film at some point, but I feel that, you know, uh, what does it mean to introduce a 30 minute lesson in the day when everything else remains unchanged? And I think that's really the big question. So if we don't uh, perhaps empower our children to perhaps really question this idea of happiness and to figure out what is it that makes them happy, then I don't know whether having a 30 minute day uh, a lesson which asks you to take a pause, which is always a good thing, Sh closing your eyes and breathing deeply is always a good thing, there is nothing wrong with that. It's always a good thing to bring more stories into the classroom, the question is what kind of stories. Uh, so all of those qu things I think, and I think what it points to really is the idea of examination, you know, like, I, I don't mean exams, but like the examined life. So the examined curriculum, like how do we examine the things that we are doing? And so for children, in the end, happiness is not a constant state, no? It will never be that. All we can do, I think, and this takes, I mean, I'm 53 and I'm still learning this. All we can do is, I think, to figure out the things that make us happy and the ways in which we can try to realize them. And also to figure out that when they don't work, how do we cope with that? You know, how do we cope with that feeling of not getting the thing we want or not being in a state which is always there? So. All that requires examining and leading that examined life, you know. And I think that we can only um, 
give our children the ability to do that if we have done gone through it ourselves and that it, that means as parents as teachers as administrators as policy makers at all of those levels you know so uh, this is not something and it cannot be uniformly kind of it's not a little capsule that we can give to everybody in the same way no everyone will have based on their context these will be different and they should be different because uh, God knows we don't want to live in that science fiction clone world, no? So, um, this, I think, for me, the, 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 I love being in the classroom with children. I hate all the rest of the thing that comes with teaching, which is all the documentation and marking. I hate giving marks. But I love being in the classroom with children because I think it's in that interaction that uh, that, that interaction forces me also to examine my life. No, like I can't talk to kids about question, question, question the process, question why, ask yourself why if I'm not doing it for myself. And I think that's what I really love about uh, being in the classroom. So we are moving on to that moment now. Samina, you can have your happiness quotient with the children <laughs> right here, there. Okay. A few of them are there and I'm sure they're waiting to hear some stories from you, right? Are you? Yes. See? So thank it. you for coming and I'm always, always happy to listen to other people's stories and for other people to listen to mine. Um, how old are you all? You're a little bit perhaps, yeah, they're five, six? How old are you? Seven. Seven. Six plus. Okay. Seven. Okay. Seven. <laughs> okay, and there's another one here. Nearly five. Nearly and five. you? Three, three years old. He's three. And you? One. Three and a half. Three plus four. Did I see anybody else? Oh, yes. Oh, God. I missed you. Sorry. Eleven plus. Whoa. Eleven. So we have a huge range. Uh, but Sabina, uh, I beg to differ about one thing. Huh. You asked what, let's find out the age of children. You know, teachers always remain a children at heart. <laughs> but, 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 but I can't go by asking no. for the age of all yeah, these teachers, no, right? No, 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 no. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> so, the floor is so yours. for me also, I think the reason I write these books, uh, sometimes people ask me that how do you write books for children? So the thing is to remember what you were like at that age and that that part of you is still somewhere inside, no? So I absolutely agree with But Sudeshna. Samina, I have, I have got a little request hmm. because I would like you to move up. Move up. Okay. And, and there is somebody who is going to be with you. Yes, yes, to ask me questions, right? Uh, no, she is, she is somebody very special. Uh, we call her uh, mom, perfecto, <laughs> okay, right? So, perhaps somebody who, uh, please, 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 come and sit, Samina. Yes, Siddhi, you're here, I've got your name right? Siddhi, correct. Siddhi. So Siddhi is now going to get into a little conversation. I think before that, Samina, a bit of reading and then would we can love have to the that. conversation because these children will definitely look forward to a bit of story time and then Siddhi will take over, right? So I'm going to talk to you about this book which is called Nida Finds a Way and it's about a seven-year-old girl. So some of you might recognize yourself and some of you may be growing into that. So Nida is this girl who's very curious about the world. She wants to know what that puddle of water is like. She wants to know if she opens the window, what she's going to see. She wants to know if she climbs that tree, what is she going to see? But you know, Nida's father, he's very frightened about her exploring the world. So he's constantly trying, he loves her so much that he's constantly trying to protect her. And he thinks, oh my God, if she steps into that puddle of water, maybe the water is dirty and then she will fall sick. Oh my God, if she climbs a tree, maybe she'll fall and break a, break an hour bone. So he's constantly protecting her. So Nida's um, got to work around it because I think children are very smart, no? You figure out what your parents are like. 
parents are not as smart as children isn't it yeah you know that <laughs> don't tell us your secrets about how you work around your parents but i'm sure you have it so i'll read you a small bit siddhi shall i read a little bit from the please, book please. so you know what nida is like and maybe some of you will recognize yourself in her so what happens is so like i told you abba is the one who's all the time saying nida no you can't do this nida no you can't do that right now the thing that nida wants to do is in this first opening chapter okay and it's called the bicycle quest i want to ride a bicycle nida sang out her small hand quite big for a 7 year old she thought was folded into abba's large one as they walked together through the streets of abul fazl enclave the large hand quivered and tried a strange move as if it wanted to hold on uh, hold not just the small hand but also the wrist and maybe the entire arm she wants to just grab her and keep her like this and then this is what he says no 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 abba stopped walking nida looked up his eyes were round like puris his beard twitched nervously in all directions like the traffic on the street do you see this road nida looked down at the road it was black like most roads many kinds of wheels roll past scooter tires car tires rickshaw wheels bicycle wheels do you see this traffic nida looked up a red maruti was overtaking a faded white tempo a motorcycle was swaying to the left a rickshaw swerving to the right no cycling for you Imran went past on a cycle much too big for him riding scissor style he was in Nida's class Nida look no hands have you seen sometimes children they ride no the cycle without their hands so Imran was doing that <laughs> show off thought Nida and turned to Abba not like that she began i don't want to ride like that but Abba's eyes had become rounder his face had become red Nida sighed. She knew that face. Abba the warrior they called him at home. When Nida climbed up the ladder that led to the water tank, Abba flapped his arms in panic. When Nida came home from school with a scraped knee, Abba lurched about the house looking for better dean. When Nida picked up an earthworm and examined it closely, Abba tossed it out of her hands. No 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 was his favorite thing to say Abba loved Nida very much she was the apple of his eye not just the apple she was the mango the guava the lychee the entire fruit basket he wanted to protect her from everything he made a sleep under mosquito netting because you can get dengue or chikungunya he soaked fruits in potassium permanganate water because you can get diarrhea He even bought fancy sunscreen lotion for her because you can get sunburned. Amma said he worried too much. Abba's beard quivered as he gave a speech on being ready for the worst. But Amma just giggled and continued to embroider the batwas for her next order. Dadi said she'd never seen a father behave like this. Abba's arms flapped as he explained what modern fathers were like. but dadi just sighed and continued to stir the dal sitwat khala who lived next door said she wished fahim khalu did half as much for his daughter abbas faced on red as he mumbled something about daughters being treasures but sitwat khala was already convinced and abba rushed away in embarrassment nida loved abba too she loved walking with him holding on to his hand she loved it when he read her a story stroking her hair to help her fall asleep She loved it when he played Ludo with her and lost every time. Does your father do that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But she also loved poking her head around corners, sticking her hands into openings and putting her feet into puddles. There was so much to do in the world, she thought. She'd never be able to do it all if she followed Abba's instructions and sat in one place reading a book. And now that she was 7, She thought it was time to ride a cycle. She needed to make a plan. I'll stop there. <laughs> so, do some of you recognize yourself in Nida? Yeah? You want to do something and your parents are saying, "No, no, no, you can't do that." 
Ya? Ya. <laughs> They already love your book. Okay, so hello everyone and uh, it's a lovely and warm morning and we have gathered here today at the Vidanya School, Gurugram for the Children's Lit Fest. Let me introduce myself. I'm Siddhi Kapoor. I'm a journalist and I uh, am the founder of a parenting platform called Mom Imperfecto because I feel that all moms are imperfect and perfect in their own ways. <laughs> and we have with us a very special person, Samina Mishra. She needs no introduction. You guys love her already and the book. <laughs> she is a multi-talented person, a documentary filmmaker, and she runs the Magic Key Center for Arts and Children. Childhood. And she is in childhood and she is an excellent author. Thank you so much for joining us today, Samina. Thank you. Thank you. And we have me. lots of questions from the warrior parents. <laughs> so uh, shall we start? Yes. So, uh, Samina, when I, while I was reading your book, you know, it reminded me of the helicopter way of parenting and, you know, how most of uh, we, parents are warrior in nature and we are overprotective to an extent. So, um, what do you have to say about that and, you know, do you have any advice for the warrior parents? So, first of all, I want to say that, you know, parenting has become a thing when it never was, no? And that's a sign of the world changing and uh, the world that we inhabit now. And part of me, I'm also a parent, so part of me, I understand where that the worry comes from because you think about it, in the old days, even, even when I was a child, you know, uh, by the time I was 11, I remember walking, at least it was a good two kilometers from my house to the market and independently, yeah? But we don't let our kids do that now and there's a reason also for it, you know, like really think about it. Would we be okay with children stepping out and crossing not, this road? Not even going to the park, we worry about that yeah. too. We can't send them to the park alone. Yeah. So that, that, I think there's a combination of two things. One is the way that the world has changed, but also the way that we form communities now, you know. We don't know people around us in the way that we used to. Uh, and so that level of trust and having this, this idea of that, uh, you know, a child is actually raised by a village, we are losing that more and more, no? Because we don't know who is part of our village, right? And um, so I understand why parents would um, sort of worry. Uh, I'm not at all in favor of constantly watching over the child. Clearly I'm not. And that's why this book is there. But I think that uh, we require both uh, changes at the individual level as parents, but we also require structural changes that can enable parents to make those individual changes. No, it's not enough to just place the burden on the individual parent. We have to think of how are we building our communities? What's the kind of architecture? Like you here in the school, you're thinking about architecture before even starting the school because that's important, isn't it? So how, how are we building these spaces in our cities? Uh, what are we doing that allows us to engage with the people who will be around our children so that we know them and we know them well? So there's a lot of all of those things, you know? Uh, but I think that it's really important that we give our children as much independence and agency as we can. And so we have to keep pushing. I remember when my son was, um, I think he had turned 13, okay? And uh, I used to live in Noida at that time. And he went to a friend's house. And that day I told him that, uh, so it was, it was not like walking, dis it was not even cycle rickshaw distance it, thing. But I said, you're going to take an auto uh, and come back home. You're going to call me. He didn't have a phone. At that. We, I gave him his phone much later. So I said, you will call me when you're leaving. And, and when you're here, I'll be here to receive you. He's the mother of the friend called me in a panic when it was time for him to leave, saying that, oh my God, he's going to take an auto, he's going to take an auto, he's saying, I'll drop him, you know, it's not a problem. So I said, no, 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 I want him to take that, you know. Now, it was something for us to like, we had to think about it, you know, but it is also because that that is the kind of culture that we're in. I've recently discovered this wonderful show on Netflix, I'm forgetting the name, but... Old enough. Old enough. Isn't it amazing? And what it tells you is how that there's a culture there, no, of enabling the children. 
we don't have a culture of enabling the children and so i think that is also affecting their social skills the kids social skills because we are being too overprotective and you know given them a very protective yeah. environment and which is affecting their life yeah. skills also yeah. in a so way. this idea of don't talk to strangers of course we know why that's there and we know also that we have to like protect our kids and do that but some part of me also wonders that if we never talk to strangers how are we going to find out about new things and new kinds of people and new ways of being in the you world need to come out of your comfort zone yeah. that's very yeah. important for kids to learn but in a kind of secure way secure. yeah so um samina from this book needa finds a way what are some of the things you would want parents and children to learn what are the takeaways for them so firstly i would like them to just read the book because they like it. they enjoy it you know um i'm not like super in favor of ev- so i do i write always there it's true there is an agenda always in the books <laughs> i'm not free of that but i hope that when readers read it it's because they want to turn the page and they want to know what's happening next rather than oh i've got this big moral lesson waiting for me i don't believe in that so much i mean like yeah as i in, as i said you know I, i do have an agenda but i want to be able but to write in a way that that is not what is foregrounded yeah, but you would want parents to not be so uh warrior i, I would like uh-huh. i would like the world to be a place where children can really explore it can feel confident in exploring it and where parents can watch that perhaps from a distance knowing that it's safe for children to do that mm-hmm. you know so i would say we need to kind of like make the world wider for our child um in 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 increments mm-hmm. you know so perhaps it's the house to begin with mm-hmm. and then it's the neighbor's house and maybe then it's a street outside you know slowly slowly we have to widen the world for the child because if we don't i think this is the problem that we have in the world now i strongly believe that people make bad choices in electing bad leaders and subscribing to bad politics because they've not had the chance to actually meet people who are not like them right okay so coming back to this uh, you know in today's time a lot of emphasis is there on reading in schools and you know lots of schools are coming up with uh, a curriculum which is based on reading so uh, one what do you have to say about that and also do you feel reading only reading is enough to uh, give a child uh, um, enough kind of an education or do you think it should be a good mix of both so and she says no yeah how is she what was the line in it she says um she'd never be able to do it all if she followed abba's instructions and sat in one place reading a book <laughs> so no <Correct. laughs> i don't think i think we need many kinds many of things kinds. as you know i i make films and i write and i teach so clearly my life is about doing many kinds of things um however having said that i think our relationship with the written word is really important i think no matter how visual uh, this generation is the uh, need for the uh, understanding and building a relationship with the written word is really important we know that you know a language and uh, you know particularly uh, english in our context but you know other kinds of languages we know that they they become the currency of power and the uh, ability that you have with language and what it can enable you to do can actually uh, open up doors for you in the world totally totally right yes. so i feel the relationship with the word is important for the world but i also feel it's really important for actually our own inner uh, the person inside because you know as a child when i was young and i discovered the magic of reading it really didn't matter where i was after that i could always always find something to do you know so that having that space inside and that relationship with the book which can take you to so many different worlds it opens open up, up a whole new world for you so you know, many reading. different characters so many different ways of being in the world we get ideas from yes. that know that oh maybe that's also possible i so many times i feel that you know um, the writers block <laughs> that i don't get ideas so i start reading i pick up a book yeah, and i start reading exactly exactly 
Sure. Yes, yes. Come on, you must have a question for me. Do you okay, all like maybe you want to say something to me. It doesn't have to be in the form of a question. Maybe you want to tell me that uh, how you liked the Nida. Or maybe you want to tell me uh, how, what you think of reading. Do you all read? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay, now. Oh, you have a question. There is a question. I just want to say, uh, you were right that schools encourage reading and in our school we have like reading program which is RP. So each year they give us a different book which mm. they make us do different skills from and they make us, and they teach us new words from the book. And they, sorry? And they teach us new uh, words from the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I mean, that reading opens that up and you're constantly, uh, your vocabulary grows. but. What is it that you really love about reading? Is that what you love about it? Yeah, wanting to know. No? Oh yeah, there's another question here. Yeah. I love most of the horror stories. Wow. So that's the next genre. <laughs> yeah, Samina? <laughs> horror stories, you've got, you've got to read them. No, I can see two parents there, yeah. I like to put them in a, a spot, spot once in a while, <laughs> being a teacher. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure you have some question for Samina. Yes? No, it's, uh, well, good morning and um, it's lovely to hear uh, today morning. My two kids actually posed a question to Miss Samina. Ah. <laughs> uh, so, well, um, we, I as a parent, I'm a doctor and I as a parent have uh, read books since they were, you know, since very early years. So like we say that even when they are before toddler, we read them picture books and so on. And now my son has, uh, you know, has, he's a voracious reader, I would say. So he has completed books on Harry Potter series and mystery series and uh, my daughter is already into, uh, you know, greetings from somewhere and famous five and secret seven. So the 11 and seven. It also comes with, of course, the um, uh, habits at home. And uh, thankfully, Sriram School, uh, Ravali promotes reading uh, to a big extent. I really like, I, I catch hold of bookseller, you know, the bestsellers. And one of my favorite reads recently was uh, uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama. And uh, yeah, all the philosophy, self-help books, uh, those genre like, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the fiction, the, it's all passing. Now for me, I rather read books on parenting mm -hmm. and attend these parenting sessions and book fairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, indirectly, I feel, don't you feel, Samina, the book that you have written could, could be for children, but it's a great book on parenting. Well, thank you so much for saying that uh, because, like I said, there's always an agenda that we have, no, when we are writing. So, somewhere I think that was part of my agenda too. <laughs> Yeah. No, correct. I really like that idea. And yes, of course, being helicopter parents or rather helicopter mothers who try to, but in, you know, within that realm that this is one uh, aspect, this is the other. And within that, we allow freedom to children. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that have changed over the years, over the decades. It used to take a village to raise a child. And I've correctly said, we don't even know who is a part of our village. So we worry, we are uh, constantly thinking, we overthink rather. But things like this, when we interact with each other, we also know that you know most of the mothers are sailing in the same boat. So we somewhere <laughs> kind of loosen up, somewhere kind of uh, try to find our common friends amongst yeah. those mothers and you know those communities and all, and it really helps. So talking, reading definitely broadens our vision. And uh, yes, I think. I think if we. Thank you remain, so much. <laughs> if we are going to remain curious, then our children will be curious. And actually curiosity is the only thing that can help us to build those communities, no? Because if we feel we already have the answer, then we will live a narrow life and an, and an unexamined life. Yeah. Would you want to ask something to Samina, any observations? Sure. Yep. Yeah. 
गुड मॉर्निंग समीना गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन या सो एज वी सेट दैट या विलेज रेज इज चिल्ड्रन सो बेसिकली वी बिलोंग्स टू अ स्मॉलर टाउन इन राजस्थान सो वेन एवर लाइक आर किड गोज टू राजस्थान एट आर होम टाउन में भी सो देयर प्रॉब्ली ही डजेंट रिटर्न टू होम टिल वी विल बी कॉलिंग हिम अगेन एंड अगेन एंड ही विल बी लाइक सिटिंग इन द नेबर्स होम बिकॉज द रिलेशनशिप विच आर पेरेंट्स और द एंसेस्टर्स है क्रिएटेड इन दैट टाउन लाइक द टेन फिफ्टीन हाउस इज नियर बाय विल बी लाइक वेयर ही इज ईटिंग वेयर ही इज स्लीपिंग एवरीथिंग विल बी लाइक टोटली अगेन लाइक विलेज इज रेजिंग ए चिल्ड्रेन हाउ एवर वैन इट कम्स टू द मेट्रो सिटीज लाइक वी हैव स्टेड इन मुंबई वी आर स्टेइंग इन गुड़गांव we actually don't know who is living in 103 if i am living in 101 exactly so that's where we believe like how do we change that culture so like we become a helpless though we want to interact though we want to share our thoughts they also have kids but it makes a too much effort to get into that house because that doesn't come naturally now yeah so how do we get to that zone because we also feel awkward how will they react will they accept it will they not accept it because we all come from a different races and uh, then again like different religions however in the hometowns or the places there probably everybody is following the same religion same caste same uh, therapy maybe well they are not coming from different greeds but here because people are coming from different sorts of people different zoner it becomes much difficult so how do we overcome it So I think you've actually raised some really important kind of uh, these are important observ. No, is a very It important is. observation because while on the one hand you're saying in the small town, in some senses there is more freedom for the child and there is the ability to move around, but alongside that you also. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's all right. That's all. but alongside that you're also saying how it is also circumscribed because everybody is from the same religion or caste so that immediately is circumscribing the child's world isn't it so this is actually i think the problem that the the uh, the reason that cities work the the advantages of cities is this that you know we can uh, leave behind some of those markers of our identity isn't it and that we can become like as everybody else who go, gets up in the morning goes to work comes back whatever but the disadvantage then of the city is that in that automated kind of existence we lose that apnapan right so this i think that first of all i think recognizing this that there may not necessarily be one ideal that the ideal is not that we just go back to the small town because we know our villages are ridden with caste and you know there is there if you're in the upper caste then it's okay but if you're not then you have a terrible existence you know there are other kinds of challenges so maybe that's also not the ideal so i think first of all recognizing that every situation has certain things which work and certain things that we don't if we first identify that only then can we start thinking of the solutions now what you pose is of course the big one which we all have struggled with and we will continuing to struggle so how do we make that first who is going to make that first move 101 or 103 who is going to ring the doorbell first you know that's the question and i think sometimes we have to also just take be the courageous one and do it and you know it we don't have to always like the next door neighbor no it's okay sometimes we may not get on they may not be people that we want to be friendly with then we try 104 <laughs> <laughs> no that's one thing i think he just used it as an example yeah so but that's the thing that when every household is busy like this then if we are able to build a community we can offer support you know so carpooling for example so then now five houses don't have to all get up at 9 o'clock and get out on the road one day one house does and the next day one house does so you are also sharing the burden which is what used to happen in the old ways in the joint family system no so you have to think of the idea of family in a new way you know these ideas are not 
fixed they should not be fixed i think there is a dynamism to these things if we bring a kind of playfulness to it no and we bring a kind of curiosity to like what is it that will work for me yeah you know and i like your point that you know make that effort if you can also make that effort and go and talk to your neighbor yeah you know yeah. instead of just so go and make that effort and you know be yeah i i <clears throat> i just wanted to move away from the reading part uh, to a concept yesterday there was a discussion happening in the evening of the power of boredom and how it led to creativity yeah. right and i just i know i don't want your views on it but i thought maybe if you could share some of the you know, how you utilize that to go in the direction that you are in today into film making and writing were there any instances like that where so you know at this point in my life i i'm dying for time to be bored <laughs> it has become particularly you know can i say like you know in this when the pandemic started and there was this whole suddenly it was like the world has become so nice and everyone is so like we are going to slow down and we are just imagining this world where the skies will be blue and the birds will be chirping and all of that it went out of the window in 6 months and we are on this like we are hurtling and there are deadlines and we are like zoom meetings and this 24/7 availability it has become impossible to find the time to be bored and i long for it <laughs> because uh, as you know i mean that's why you've raised this that if we don't have that empty time and empty space how are we going to imagine new ways of filling that yeah so for me i would say that um, you know i uh, i was a kind i i'm fairly disciplined kind of person so you know if i have things to do i kind of structure my time and my day and i get things done but i think that in my um, early kind of working years i made this choice and i at that time perhaps it may have felt to me like you know am i doing the right thing i don't know but i think that it was really important because it created this fallow time for me which is i made this choice that i was going to work freelance and i did not go into a 9 to 5 life you know and for a creative person that's really important because what it meant was when i had a project then i was working 24/7 but then when it finished and until the next one started i had fallow time and it was in that fallow time that i thought of what is it that i want to make what do i want to actually say and some of that comes from that extremely busy time and the kind of engagement that you have with people and on a project and it pushes you to think but that fallow time then gives you the time to process what you took away from it and some of it is stuff that you don't want to do but you get to at least know that you know so yeah i think that for a creative person it's really important to have that and i i'm in fact working now to be able to create these last few years have been too packed do you think it's important for parents to have family time for their children see parenting i think is a 24/7 yeah so that's not about fallow time that is approach I think that that is a, because parenting is like 20 my son is now 20 but I think I'm still parenting no so that but it is an approach that is is my relationship with my child my everyday relationship only guided by the things that we need to do or like is it just like I want to I do something which I really enjoyed and I want to share that with my child um so I'm going to do it again and uh, i want to i i i uh, see the child doing something and that like really makes me curious so that act of seeing is actually in a sense fallow time you could classify it as a that but for me i'm i'm saying it's about approach you're making time to observe you're making time to actually do the everyday relationship no so I'll it's not i'll i'll interrupt here mm-hmm. so there is a lot of generation gap you and i think like that you know we have a we have fallow time we we are curious to know what to do we want to understand what we want to do but abhi ki generation mein ye bahut problem hai they will come up to you as i i am a mom of two my daughter will come up to me and say mama main bore ho rahi hu mujhe pata so unko pata nahi hai unko kya karna hai they don't want to explore 
No, the children will always have always said ah, I am getting bored. Getting that bored. is not. Yeah, it's then you have to say keep think, na. I tell. Ah. Yeah, that's what I do. Well, go and go and ah. explore. Boring to get bored is also okay. Yeah. You know, it's important to get bored. Yeah. Every time you don't need a gadget or TV or no, something to read to uh, pass your time. Sometimes yeah. you need to get bored and explore. Okay, so tell us about your childhood. You know, what was your childhood like, and what kind of books did you like reading then? So uh, I discovered reading. I think when I must have been uh, six, I was six, something like that. My very first Enid Blyton. I remember my mother taking me to um, this bookshop in Khan Market, and I remember buying it. I still have that memory. It was called Bimbo and Topsy, about a puppy and a kitten. Uh, Enid Blyton, and that started me off. So I read a lot. I think I read all started, the different. You started with the right book, I think. <laughs> yes. But I'll tell you something. It's also about context, you know. So when my son was about that age, I was. I went. I, I didn't have my Enid Blytons by then. I'd given them away. I went looking for this book, and I, because I wanted to, I had this memory of how it had, what it had done to me. I went looking for it, and I bought it for him. Mm. And my son was a uh, he was a reader, uh, but uh, it didn't work for him at all. At all. Yeah. So it's also about context, you know. And there was a he was reading other kinds of things, and that really he read it to humor me, yeah. but it didn't work in the same way at all for him. But I discovered in it Blyton, and I just read and read and read all those things, and I loved you know all the adventure books and Magic Faraway Tree and all of those things. Now, of course, when I look back and I read all about colonization and you know uh, all the critiques on Blyton and all that, I see, I see the validity of that. But the thing is that I did experience it in some way, and I think that that is also important. important. And it set me off on, and it didn't prevent me from not being able to recognize, uh, you know, uh, stereotypical representation when I am presented with that. So I think. that there's a place for many things uh, in a child's life growing and up and you know I, a lot of times you know parents come up with this question since i have a parenting community so they will keep asking me you know kaise bachcho ko books padhaye you know how to inculcate this habit of reading so i think one of the mothers also said obviously by following the same habits and all but there are couples where both the parents are working so how to include a good reading time in a child's schedule सो so, एक तो आई थिंक वो शेड्यूल नहीं होना चाहिए हाउ कैन आई मीन इट हैज टू बी समथिंग दैट द चाइल्ड वॉन्ट्स टू डू सो या आई मीन आई थिंक अ बिग पार्ट ऑफ इट इज दैट इफ द चाइल्ड डज सी पीपल अराउंड हु आर द थिंग इज दैट आर नॉट जस्ट रीडिंग बट दैट दिस प्लेजर इन दैट सो रीडिंग आई थिंक दिस पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ प्लेजर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू नो दैट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट प्लेजर इज अ गुड थिंग and that it the children should it's not only about like doing what is the right thing but also about what is it that gives them pleasure yes. and for them to be able to uh, have the opportunity to explore many things that give them pleasure so not to fetishize also reading children read in many ways no so this is the old fashioned way of yeah. reading but children are also reading on gadgets children are also reading when yes. they are out in the world in in uh, in other ways so also recognizing that reading takes on different things having uh, said that about pleasure and you know what it does is allows chi- the child to kind of make the choice and you know you give children independence and agency but i think there's also a place for uh presenting children with options you know mm-hmm. like in a sense guiding them in a sense uh, giving them uh, exposure to things which maybe they may not or maybe take them yeah. to a bookstore and let them the explore bookstore, the kind of the library yeah. those are important Got places it, yes. and you know it may be you you love a particular book you think it's really important that children read that but your child may not may not and it's okay for the child to put that away maybe the child will come to it yes. after 2 years after 3 years yeah. you don't know you know so i think there is a one ha- there, it's not about one or the other we have to like get rid of this kind of binary position and uh, reading time i think is something should not happen right. they should just read when they feel yeah. like it yeah. i think uh, we will have to focus on the children yes. and uh, the way they're moving about i think they need to move about a bit 
and all our parents right. also need to move about a bit. But before that, Akshada, could you do the honors? Little thank you for Samina. Oh, yes. Thank you so very much. And of course, I will not make the mistake and say perfecto, <laughs> but imperfecto, mom. Here's to celebrating imperfections. Yes. Imperfections, yes. yes. And There's perfection uh, and imperfection. Absolutely.